Today we're going to be doing some spring cleaning, going through some of my shoes I've been wearing recently over the past couple months. And I'm going to be giving you guys tips and tricks along the way when it comes to cleaning and protecting your shoes. And we'll be talking about stories and different memories about how I copped the shoes and what I wore them for and all those different events and whatnot. But with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started with cleaning my LeBrons first. I've been wearing a lot of shoes lately and I haven't done any cleaning in a long time. I've been traveling a lot, so just going to have a long video. We're just going to talk. We're going to have a good time right here. Just go through everything. On these in particular, recently got these. Just need to clean up the midsoles a little bit. The uppers got a little bit of dirt on them, so nothing too crazy. But on the rubber on the midsoles, I'm gonna use the back end of the brush. More firm. It's got patent leather on the upper, so I wanna stay a little bit away from that just so I can try to protect it, but. Just gotta make sure that I get all this stuff cleaned up. So. If you have like a white Air Force One, or honestly any Air Force One, um, and it has a white midsole on it, especially the outsole area, luckily there's a black bottom on these, so when you wear them, if it gets dirty, it's not gonna mess it up too much. Um, but you always wanna be aware of that, especially on these older Air Force Ones. Like these ones in particular are from, what, 2005, 2004, something like that? I think it was 2005. So when it comes to a pack like this you know these shoes are like a thousand dollars for these air force ones you want to take care of them you want to protect them and by doing that cleaning the midsoles on these older shoes will definitely help that if you leave the dirt on there for years on end and you don't clean it off and then you try to wear the shoe again later and then you try to clean it it will permanently stain that area and cause the midsoles to change in different parts of the shoe and then it's not gonna look as nice and then obviously it won't hold that value again we're collecting and all those things but say one day the time comes and you want to sell the shoe you're not going to be able to get as much money for it so to take a couple minutes do a little bit of spring cleaning and throwing some of the shoes and i got we're gonna be cleaning these up uh just the bottoms a little bit besides i got a little bit of dirt on the top i wore these at the the day club in vegas so they got a little dirty but nothing too much just some light cleaning on these. I'm not doing no crazy like restorations or anything like that. But white midsoles in particular, again, just always give them a good scrub before you decide to put the shoe away for the long haul. And when it comes to storing sneakers, I know everybody, when you have a large collection of shoes, yeah, it can be hard to wear everything, finding the right occasion, finding the right outfit, not trying to wear something twice, da da da, all these different situations. But you definitely do want to wear your shoes. You do want to get them into your rotation. So for me, I have a rotation about, I would say like 30, 40 shoes. And then I have like, obviously like the starting five and all that stuff. But there's always like shoes that are going into the rotation um, that are those higher value shoes. So I don't know if you guys saw recently, I posted on TikTok, like some of the stuff I've been wearing lately. Um, this is another one. I've been wearing these a lot. Uh, I've been trying to take care of them. I did low key get something on the toe, but I wasn't, I wasn't tripping. I mean, I still wear the shoe, it doesn't matter. But the bottoms, we're gonna clean these and protect these bottoms a little bit. And then I got my Bread 11s. I need to clean those on the midsoles as well so it doesn't stain it. That's actually the older version. So we'll get into that and talk about the different methods. But basically, with this right here, but hopefully you can see on the overhead camera, right here, you still have a lot of dirt. This is the pair that hasn't been cleaned yet. And then on these ones, it looks a lot nicer, a lot cleaner, and just full, all white. Not the patchy areas, dark and light, and then you got speckles of dirt and everything like that. So that little bit right there, and those speckles, sometimes it could be you know, uh, a drink or something like that that may have splashed on the shoe, and you wanna clean that off. I got black bottoms on these, and I plan on wearing these again, so I'm not really, the bottoms are pretty clean, so I don't really worry about that on a black bottom, uh, especially on an Air Force One. But these ones in particular, when it comes to those splatter spots and those different things from the dirt like that from wearing them out, definitely wanna try to get that cleaned off because that can stay for a long time and leave that stain. So we're just gonna hit that with a hard bristle brush real quick, run through the midsoles, and then we'll be on to the next one. And I didn't know, I was originally gonna like chop this video up and run it all like, you know, the different uh, quick angles and the switch ups and the before and afters and all the stuff. But I kind of wanted to just have a conversation with you guys. So 
We, we kind of went over the basics of cleaning the midsole of a white Air Force One. Now let's talk about this shoe in particular, how I got it, um, all those different things, what it means. So for me, uh, when these first came out, 2005, I was just getting into, you know, seriously collecting. My foot was still growing. I was young, middle school, high school era. So for me, it was like, this is a shoe that I always wanted, but I never could get it. And at the time it was hard to get. And with the online market and the way things were with, you know, tracking down different sneakers like this, it was just really hard to get over the years. And this is actually my first time owning a pair of these since they originally came out. So this shoe is almost 20 years old. What's that, 18 years since these came out. And I finally got this shoe in my collection now. So sometimes it takes 18 years to get a pair of shoes because there's just a lot of shoes out there. You can't just go buy everything all at once, right? You gotta take your time. You gotta find the gems. You gotta find the good deals. Uh, you gotta find a clean pair. And when it comes to older shoes like this, finding a clean pair in a condition like this is really, really hard. So I recently got these not that long ago uh, from Untied LA. Shout out to them over there. I'll have the link down below in the description on YouTube here. Um, but basically, Found them for a really good deal. Saw that they had a really, really clean used pair and I was like, you know what? I need these. So when it comes to that as well, uh, you can, <clears throat> I've made videos in the past of like cleaning the insoles, spraying them down with a disinfectant spray and everything like that. And people always talk about, oh, why would you buy used shoes? Like who wears used shoes? It's like, well, obviously you're gonna clean the shoe. And then like, have you never been to a bowling alley? Have you never went to a skating rink? Like. There's been thousands of feet in those pairs of shoes. <laughs> These come from a single owner. So to me, I'm like, those are probably worse than actually getting a pair of used shoes from somebody that knows how to take care of them in the first place. But I don't know, everybody has their different mindsets behind it. But for me, it's like, okay, if this shoe, these Air Force Ones are worth a thousand dollars, and if I can get them for a discounted price, and still they're gonna hold their value and I can still wear them, and they're gonna be worth a lot of money still, why would not just buy the used one and just be more inclined to wear it and all those different things, clean it up, disinfect it, do those things, and call it a day. So, I don't know. That's just kind of how I feel about it. Just did some basic cleaning on these. These look really, really good. Yeah, if you guys want to see an uh, in-depth review of this pack, <clears throat> let me know down below in the comment section. I'll make sure I get a full review for you guys and uh, just breaking it all down. But this was one of our first shoes, and that'll kind of give you guys some you know, more details about the Air Force One, cleaning them, and just making sure you're protecting those midsoles because they will yellow and age a lot faster if you let them stay dirty. And that's what kind of brings me to my Bread 11. Same thing right here. Now this pair is from, what was this, like 2012 or something like that? I think this was a 2012 Retro 13, something like, whatever year that was. Um, but these are <laughs> real dusty, so they're dusty on the uppers. And then also, I need to clean the midsoles on these as well. So I'm gonna just give them a quick wipe down. The towel is already a little wet, so that's really easy, obviously. Boom, now look at that, way better. These already look a lot cleaner than the use the other dirty pair, but hey, real quick, if you guys are getting any value out of this video, make sure you guys hit that like button. And I want to let you know, I have a full community of dedicated sneakerheads looking to take their game to the next level and investing in the shoes, growing their collections. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure you hit the link down below in the description, get signed up. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on the inside. All right, let's get back to the video. When it comes to the midsoles, we want to hit that. I hit the toothbrush on these ones. Classic, old school. Don't want to mess it up too much. Got a mid bristle toothbrush, just boom. And just get that dirt off. Um, this can stain those midsoles as well. And Bread 11s are really easy to wear, clean, store, all those different things. The outsole is red, so you don't, the yellowing is noticeable on pairs that yellow bad. I know it's kind of weird to say, but you can tell the difference between a pair that's like super oxidized and not. The red is just not as vibrant on certain ones. So um, we're gonna scrub it a little bit more right here. Get that main dirt off, and then we'll hit the back end of the toothbrush just to make sure that it's crispy white right here. Um, honestly, it's all clean, it looks good. So, these Bread 11s, um, 2012, I have all the retros and generations and the OGs and all the different stuff like that. Um, this one in particular was just one that I've, you know, I had, I kept the 2008 pair dead stock and I've just been kind of sitting on these, just letting them do their thing. So I've been wearing these ones the most. 
um, compared to the 2008 ones. And I wear these 2012 ones. And then the new retro came out and I'm like, man, I still wear my 2012s, but the they're still so clean. I keep them clean, the creasing ain't bad. Like, I, and it's crazy because people are like, man, you don't even barely wear those. And I'm like, bro, trust me, I wear these a lot. But if you know how to wear 11s, especially with the ankle in the back, that's where you get the creases a lot. When you put your foot in the shoe, make sure you're careful about putting your foot in the shoe because that's what causes that creasing around the ankle. And you wanna keep that protected. Now, the left side is gonna be a lot better when it comes to creasing than my right side naturally because when you drive and those different things as well, it can cause your foot to crease from going like this and pushing on the pedal, different things like that. So just some stuff to be aware about. Uh, we'll clean the bottoms just a little bit, nothing crazy. There's just some bigger dirt pieces on here. Want to get that out. But there's not too much to worry about on any of these, honestly. I think uh, everything's solid. You know, just classic spring cleaning because I plan on, you know, putting these up for a little bit, pulling out some new stuff for the rotation. So when it comes to um, brushing the shoe, as you can see, there's a bunch of dirt right here, but there's no dirt on me. So when you do that, Brush the shoe in a single direction away from you, and then you won't worry about dirt splattering all on top of you as you're cleaning the shoes. If you're going back and forth, then you're gonna get a lot of dirt going both ways, and then what's gonna happen? You're gonna have dirt all over you, you're gonna have speckles hitting your face, and you're gonna be like, oh, that's sick, all that different stuff. So always try to just brush it in one single direction and get it you know, flowing with the outsole, whichever way that may be and then that way you can get it cleaned off. So, looking really good. I don't need to clean these too crazy on the bottoms. Uh, just get some of that major dirt off. And then we don't have too much, uh, like I said, from driving, the heel of your foot gets dirty right here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on camera from the overhead cam, but there's definitely uh, some black area right here. And that's just from natural over time, but I truly don't care too much about that. So, looking at the midsoles, all right, we gotta do the inside of this foot right here. So, looking at these midsoles, hit that real quick. Get a little spring cleaning done. Um, yeah, bro, I don't wear these to concerts, festivals, funerals, all different types of occasions. Um, this pair of Bread 11s have been with me over the years, so. I love this shoe, I love this model, I love this colorway. One of my favorite Jordan 11s of all time. Honestly, I still might think this is the greatest 11 of all time. I know that's the great debate, basically between like Space Jam, uh, Concord, and Bread. But uh, you can see right here, clean pair, dirty pair. Not too much, you know, crazy dirt, but we definitely wanna get that off to protect the midsoles. And that way when I store these, I just kind of leave them just like this unlaced so if i ever do decide to take them back out i can do that but red 11s they're coming out you know once or twice a year for me in my rotation and once they come out oh yeah we rocking them things man we have be wearing these a lot and it's cool because you can wear these on rainy days too it's a black shoe so i like that it still looks clean with the outfit you can go through and do a lot of cool stuff with this type of shoe um but yeah that's just kind of where i'm at with these just gotta knock this other foot out real quick and then we'll take it to the green Oregon 5 next because that has the suede on the upper and you wanna be real careful about cleaning the bottoms and everything because of that. And you wanna make sure that you protect that suede without getting that water on there, without doing those things at the same time. So I have a very careful process when it comes to cleaning the outsoles on those shoes. And some people wonder, hey, why do you clean the outsoles? Same thing, we talk about these ones in particular don't have like too many issues when it comes to yellowing per se, but when it comes to just keeping the shoe clean, you definitely wanna have a nice bottom. And then not having that dirt on there. For me, like I shoot YouTube videos and stuff, so if I use these for an example in a video and the bottoms are like super dirty and they're like sitting on something else, I don't wanna stack them on something because it might dirty up the other shoe just because the bottom is dirty on one shoe. So that's kind of natural for me for just overall taking care of my sneakers, using it for content, uh, storage, different things, display, you name it, images, whatever it may be. There's a lot of different reasons as to why I would clean the outsoles of my shoes. Um, but <clears throat> this is where we at right here with this one. Let me see if we got any big dirt chunks on the bottom. Got a little bit of grass in here. 
we'll get that out. Yeah, these ones is honestly a little bit cleaner than the other ones, so should be real quick and easy. Same thing right here. Stroke one direction away from you. Get that dirt out of there. Wipe it down. The towel is a little damp, but basically dry. And it'll kind of get a little bit more wet as you use it on more sneakers. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at with these. Definitely a lot cleaner. I'm excited about putting these up for a little bit, getting them out of the rotation and pulling something new in the rotation. You can't wear all your shoes all at once. So, you know, it takes time to get through those things. So now we wanna make sure the surface is really clean because we're bringing in an even more expensive sneaker with even more <laughs> difficult materials on the upper when it comes to these. So I'll put down this towel, get another towel to put the shoe on. Nice little microfiber joint. So like I said, the uppers on these, it's the Oregon Duck 5 PE. Uh, I got these a while ago. Then I ended up trading, getting a different size, and I never had a 13, then I finally got them. And then I, <laughs> I just, I couldn't stop wearing them. So now I'm trying to like, make sure I take care of these as much as possible. So this time in particular, the shoe is still straight, everything is good, but I'm definitely gonna just wipe these outsoles down just a little bit, get some of that dust off the bottoms, and then we're gonna put these things up. I think they need to go into retirement for a little bit. So the towel is wet on the end already. And we're just gonna wipe the black areas of the shoe. And you'll see, so these outsoles in particular, they have a smoky bottom. It's not a pure, like clear, translucent or icy blue. It's more of a smoky bottom. So luckily I've worn these at events. I do walk outside in them. Um, but I've worn them at a, a lot of events that's inside based things, not out in the grass and different stuff like that. So these are gonna get more dusty than anything. So you also wanna be strategic about, you know, when and where you wear your shoes and the value and the different things like that. Like, obviously you're not gonna wear your most expensive shoes out in the mud for no reason just to go do the thing. Like, it doesn't make sense, right? There's definitely alternate options if you have a collection with a broad amount of shoes. So for me, I'm always selective about that. Okay, I'm wearing a van side, da da da. Great, I can still wear these for that. So just like that, you see a lot cleaner, a lot nicer right here on the bottoms. And then let's put it next to this one. Hopefully you can tell the difference between the two. I'll shoot from up top. This is the cleaned pair and I just wiped it down with a wet towel. And then this is the dirty pair. So just from wearing these inside, that helps a lot. Now, if you got a lot of dirt, the strategy that I use for this I never put the water and all the suds and all the stuff on there. What I'll do is, let me wipe this down so I don't get wet. But basically I'll use the back end of the toothbrush. I'll wrap it around like this. So you got the hard end here, put my hand inside the shoe and then I'll scrub on the shoe like this with the toothbrush in here, which you can do it this way too if you want to. Um, but that's if there's like a lot of dirt on it or if it, you know, it's a lot more caked in than normal. But that way you're not spreading a lot of suds or the opportunity for, cause sometimes like you see right here, there's an indent and the water will flow into the side, the side of the shoe. Because of that, they'll get water spots on the side of the foot. And then when it dries on the suede, you'll see these little spots and it'll be like, damn, I did that from trying to clean the outsoles and I was trying to protect the upper. So that's something you always wanna be aware of. You wanna have not too much water flowing around the suede area on this shoe just to help to protect it a little bit longer when it comes to cleaning them and wiping them down and everything like that. And then obviously I have other videos and tutorial stuff on cleaning suede and protecting it and uh, using the mink oil and all those different things like that. But overall, quick little wipe down. Um, I think I'm gonna lace these ones up. We're gonna lace them up. Usually if I know I plan on wearing a shoe again, like soon, I'll just like not even lace them back up. But some people wonder like, why do you lace them up? Like dead stock style, like what's the point? Like, and then the, <laughs> the funny thing is like, people will be like, oh, he never wears his shoes, da da da. Cause they'll see the, you know, after I clean the shoe and protect it, get it right and put it in the back in the display case. You know, I don't want to put it in there dirty and drunk looking. Like I want to make it look back presentable. So what I'll do is, I'll dead stock knot it and I'll put it in the in its place and do what I do. 
so it has that you know that nice presentation I, I like it when it looks like that everybody has their preferences that's just my style um and then also like i said for videos photos examples different things like that it's easier for me to have the shoe uh when i'm doing a comparison video and i want to show like the styles cuts materials all the different things i want to show it looking more like a dead stock style more clean and put together than like loosened up and just kind of sloppy because that's i mean that's how i wear it but when it comes to presentate uh, presentation and making the shoe looking back to its truest form that's kind of what i'm going to go with all the time so lacing these back up to that dead stock style just like we did on the lebron air force one same thing right there i need to lace up the other one still um but that's all similar to that so that's something i always like to do as well when it comes to that, just the presentation of the shoe, bro. I don't know. Everybody has their preferences. It really doesn't matter. Do what you do, whatever you want to do. I'm just going through my spring cleaning, and I have a lot of other shoes to clean. But this video would be way too long if we did that. So I'm just kind of going through my spring cleaning and just showing you guys my process on some of these, giving a couple of different examples uh, when it comes to the types of materials and uppers and things like that um, on this video. So. Let's get this one laced up real quick. And then we'll get on to the Air Force Ones. Tell a little bit about that. I'm not sure if I made a video when I was wearing those. I think I posted some photos and stuff on Instagram or something, I don't know. I might've had like some TikToks or something I made. But yeah, here we go, Oregon 5. Now, last but not least, we got the Air Force Ones, the off-whites right here. These things go crazy and uh, I'm just gonna clean the back of the heel a little bit. I think there was some dirt like on the toe on one of these. I might've wiped it down low key already before from a different time. Cause I knew I was putting them away for a little bit. But I just wanna make sure that these are, these are fine. And uh, for these ones in particular, now the whole upper, the midsole, everything is the same color. So if you get water that's coming over, especially with it being leather, you're not gonna have too many issues with a sneaker like this. So these ones, you can kind of go ham a little bit. Um, we're gonna use the harder bristle brush on these and then we'll wipe it down and then I'll show you what it looks like. And then I kind of go in a circular motion, kind of small. And as you can see, there's suds kind of popping around all right, right here. So I kind of try to just keep it in that area. The brush is more firm, so it's gonna make it pop a lot more because of that. So. When you see that, start brushing away from you and then hit some circles. Trying to keep the suds down from flying away, flying all over the place. I'll show you guys what this looks like as we wipe away from us. Now, normally what I'll do in this situation, there'll be like these little suds. You can wipe it all out with a towel, but when the shoe is the same color as the upper and it's all leather and all these different things, I'll basically take it to the sink and then I'll just run the water down towards the, the toe this way. So that way the water all goes like this and it doesn't get, if you hold it like this in the water, the water is gonna go all the way down on the side of the foot. But if you hold it at an angle and put it slightly in the water stream, it'll then rinse out all those suds and get everything super clean for you. But basically, as you can see right here, I did a quick scrub and look at the difference between the two outsoles just off of that. We didn't even spend too much time on it. And you don't have to spend too much time if you already know you're gonna wear the shoe again. So I'll kind of give it a quick scrub and make the shoe look like this. And then from there, I'll put them back up, I'll lace them up and I'll have them in that dead stock style just for you know presentation purposes and sitting in the collection nice and pretty and everything. But I'll show you what it looked like DS. And then obviously I have the zip tie and all that stuff upstairs and the containers and stuff, but we'll kind of just tie it back up like that and we'll have it looking back presentable again. i um, worn these a couple times, plan on continuing to wear them, but obviously I don't wear these a lot, so I always want to make sure I protect them. And we know that this is a valuable shoe, so I want to take care of the midsoles and the outsoles as well on something like this. But that's kind of like a gist of, you know, my spring cleaning. I wanted to run through this. I figured I was like, oh, maybe I can make a video. I usually do it on my TikTok, which I'm live streaming on here now. If you guys aren't following me on TikTok, make sure you do DJ underscore sneakerhead. But just wanted to run through this for you guys and give you guys some quick tips and tricks. So if that was helpful, let me know down below in the comment section and I'll see you guys in another video. All right, y'all, I'm out. 
I would never let you down. If you made it this far to the video and you're still thinking about it, hit the link down below in the description, get set up, join the community. I'm excited to see you on the inside. We got a live meetup coming very soon and hopefully you guys are gonna be there. If not, we have one every single month, plus community giveaways. We're giving away shoes every single month. There's definitely a lot of knowledge and networking on the inside as well. And I'm looking forward to helping more people buy their first property simply because of sneakers. I'm here to help you. If you want any help, make sure you guys sign up and I'll see you guys on the inside. In my DNA, hey, the hey, only pop. choice I like to make what I'm aware today. One one I would never let you down. It's in my DNA. The only choice I like to make what I'm aware today. I was made for it. It's in the DNA.